So why do you continue to work out if you haven't noticed any measurable differences in in business? Well, I don't work out for business. I think a lot about being 90 to 100. Mm -hmm. I think about who am I gonna be at that point. Gary Vee today is trying to put out good into the world and has a big platform. Well, me at 90 to 100, I can be on some Yoda shit and if I can hang for another 10 more years, I can leave more positive deposits and if I have to do fucking Bulgarian split squats (laughs) to be there, then fuck it, I'm gonna do it. So for this, this episode, let's discuss your health and wellness habits because I know that is something that you're big on yes and a lot of entrepreneurs and business owners is this is something that they're severely lacking yes and I was the far majority of my career yeah so I work with a lot of guys they've done very well for themselves in business yes but they are burning themselves out because they are prioritizing the business over over their own personal health and happiness so how did you first come to that realization I wasn't burning myself out, I was sleeping plenty. Like I think the bis- big misnomers about me is that I'm so passion high energy that I think people don't realize how many things come to me naturally on the health and wellness front. Sleep, I've always been a six, seven, eight hour guy. Um, anxiety and pressure, like I sleep like a baby, like literally lights out. Um, but I was doing nothing on eating, and working out. Mm. And at 38, um, at about 35, I started being like, wait a minute, like, mm. I'm like a, a little, little more, ch- I'm, I'm not a little, <laughs> I'm like, there's some real fluff here. Got some love And handles. so I started playing a little bit with like exercising for the first time in my life, probably around 32 actually, going back to Matt. Matt, if you're out there, hit me up, brother, I miss you. Guy lived local, basketball dude treadmill first time. I mean, I had done nothing. Mm. Like I was one of the, back to sports cards in high school, I was a very rare breed. Almost everybody I knew, outside of like seven or 10 other dudes, like at least hit the weight room at some point in high school. Cause they played a high school sport. Like I played tennis, so like we didn't have to do that. Like I just never did anything. Mm. I'd never benched. Like I genuinely did nothing. Yeah. So at 32 is like the first time I kind of hit the gym, it was super hard, it was like super sporadic. I did very little, like I got hot for like two months and then sure enough, like nothing. Then my career started really taking off at 34 and 34 to 38, just so much travel. Like it was just like, it was just not in the cards. It didn't come natural to me. I didn't eat well, I didn't work out at all. So at 38, even when I look at the content now, I'm like, fuck, like it was really starting to go down a direction that was super obvious to me. Even though my grandfather on my mom's side, who I'm more similar to, passed young, I got to see, and even though there was not a lot of photos of him in Russia, I got to see like, and look, he had a very tough life. He'd spent 10 years in jail mm. around anti-Semitism in Eastern Europe. But like, even with all that said, the body type, and then my uncle, my mom's brother, who I'm, I think I have more body type similarities to, he on the other hand has really taken care of himself and like Uncle Joseph at like 72 looks like a fuck, like looks great. I'm like, wait a minute, like that makes more sense for me to go down that path. So I just started having realizations that this isn't good. Like just a very logical, practical convo like you're having right mm-hmm. now of like, I'm not prioritizing this, this does not come natural to me. Oh my God, I'm giving really good advice to people about business that's based on like very basic principles and I can't take that in health and wellness. Like Mm. get in the gym and and eat properly and like good things will happen and so I kind of started selling myself on this. Put out a Facebook fan page post of like I need someone. This guy John won, he worked me out for a while that was an okay run at like 35, 36, 37. Like I almost got there, I got in the gym a little bit more, he was a fun character, he had like a business and like so it was like fun for me a little bit to talk to him, it was like almost like I was consulting while mm. I was working out, it was fun. Then again, just it wasn't a real commitment. He then uh, introduced me to a kid, Mike Vacanti. Mike, who has stuck, and more people know that are in my world, he, was my trainer for six months and I worked out like six times in six months. I canceled like 47 times. Like, and so. Why? Because I just wasn't, comp- you know, and you know this, either you're in or you're out. There is no half pregnant. No. Not on business, <laughs> not on, on health and wellness, not on anything. Like you're just either in or you're out. It's just binary. Mm-hmm. And so I was half. Like I was trying, but it came so not natural. I didn't like it. 
six months later after like lally gagging with him for a couple months and then not talking to him for three months, I called him. I said, Mike, on my 40th birthday, I was on a plane, I told him a story, I was on a plane, I remember it like yesterday, I'm literally in the first row, because I remember the feet, didn't that mm-hmm. right? Head on the thing, tired, flew into Dallas flying back, you know? And I'm just like, on my 40th birthday, I'm going for it. Mm-hmm. I'm 38 and a half, <laughs> I'm talking like seven. At 38 and a half, and I'm gonna spend the next year and a half getting myself mentally in to commit to this thing. By the time the plane is in the air, because it's on the ground, by the time it just like lifts off, not you like had already committed. I've already committed to 39. Yeah. I'm like, what the fuck am I waiting to 44? Yeah. By the time I land, I text Mike, do you have a moment to talk? I go, Mike, and I figured it out from that Dallas flight home that what makes me me professionally is I love being a leader. Mm. I like delivering for Andrew and Dustin Jake. Like I like delivering for them. What I what was making me not win health and wellness was I'm not good challenging myself for myself doing it for myself. Hmm. So I figured this thing out where I was like, if I could be held accountable to a babysitter, if I don't let Mike down, if I'm doing it for Mike, maybe this will work. So this hypothesis that if I did it for someone else, it would work. And I finally got to the financial place where I could hire somebody full time to follow me around. I wanted to be suffocated. So I called Mike, I said, Mike, you're my last trainer, like, do you know somebody who's like a little younger than you, who is at that point in their life, like, you know, 19, 22, 24 year old dude who can just like fucking live with me, travel with me? That was pretty loud. Um, You know, like, you know, like, do something like that. And he said, what about me? And I said, are you there? Because he was, you know, Mike was like 25 or seven at the time. I just, he had all these clients and an online business and I wasn't sure he could. He's like, I can do it. We talked it through. A couple weeks later he started and from that day to this day, besides a three year period where his friend Jordan Mm -hmm. did it, Mike has been my full time trainer. He moved to Minnesota full time during COVID and so we do it virtually now which is a little more of a challenge for me. Like he flies in occasionally and we do it and I'm like there's a little bit of a difference and so I've been thinking through that lately. He doesn't travel with me as much but since I was 38 and a half, uh, and now I just, I turned 47, so nine years um, I've been doing it and it's completely changed my life. Soft, Jordan changed my soft tissue part of my life, so that fixed my back. Mm-hmm. Um, my strength is dramatically higher. Um, my eating habits are much stronger. I continue to be more and more educated with that in my life and so I'm, uh, I'm really happy I did it. How does, the strength aspect of it and your back feeling better and everything that goes along with consistent workouts, how has that shown up for you in the business world? Like what's the difference Zero. between? And I say that with like a funny answer mm-hmm. because I don't like making things up. I believe that it has helped so many of my friends, the amount of friends that say to me, cause when I did it, a lot of my friends who were like in better shape than me were like, fuck this, you're getting better than me. Like I'm gonna do it too. Like Mike Lazaro, big shout out. Like a lot of my friends like took up on it. And for a lot of them, it did impact it. I don't know if I, I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt, I'm sure there's some impacts because I would like to not dismiss it, but I wanna be unbelievably transparent. I don't have any extra energy than Mm. I did before, I don't. Interesting. I, I think it might be healthier energy. Right, like I might be, like I drank a lot of soda and I drink none now. Uh So like I assume that caffeine and that sugar was driving me. Mm. Now I'd like to think that (laughs) it's more healthy dynamics, but it hasn't shown up that way. It's shown up in fun ways. My son gets tired at a sporting event and wanted me to carry him from the seat to the parking lot, Mm -hmm. carrying him while I've got a bag of like, like stuff from the ball game, I didn't have the strength, even when he was a much little kid, to carry him the whole way. Whereas, you know, I remember, I mean, bring up this story because it's very vivid to me, like four or five years ago, I went like the whole way and I was like, oh my God, yeah. this is nice to have this strength because it's also a sweet moment. Like when you're a dad, your son sleeping on your shoulder late night at a game is like the cutest thing ever. Something like I am almost emotional talking about it right now. It's like a memory I'll take to the grave. Yeah. If I didn't have the strength to carry him, 
it would have been a memory I wanted to forget because I would have been holding his hand while he was like snickering and complaining and walking and so, um, like at the airport, like like the silliest shit, strength, right? Like uh, having my luggage while I can help like an elderly lady. Mm -hmm. And like I think about this stuff. Cause yeah, I, 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 I lived without strength for so long, like having a little more. And then like things I think about like, what if God forbid one day in my life I have to actually use my strength to stay alive, like I'm falling off a cliff or something. I'm like, it'll be cool if I can last six minutes instead of one minute, <laughs> yeah. maybe in that five minutes somebody will save me. Like yeah. I think about that shit. Yeah, me too. It, it makes you harder to kill, right? <laughs> it's literally yeah, real. More, more resilient. More resilient. And I don't think it is silly strength. Like the the thing with your kid, or you know, putting stuff up at in, right and the uh, overhead compartment for an elderly woman. Yeah, these are things that a lot of people don't think about, and it's just general quality of life. A hundred percent. And especially as a father, I don't know personally, yep. but I imagine this is a an extremely important thing. As you mentioned, you were yeah. getting emotional. If you weren't able to carry your son or or be there for him, like to to carry him or support him, that I imagine that would wear on you as yeah, a father if, if yeah, you're not able to you know play with them or like, whatever I think that's right I think like you know I genuinely like how it shows up in the little moments um, and look for me the soft tissue thing mm -hmm. the fascia thing like the quality of life there's the biggest delta some of those are just very nice altruistic emotional moments the actual quality of life of like my back not hurting me or being discomfort is like real and it's probably, though I talk about sleeping well, like now literally sitting here, like, you know, like my quality of sleep has been better the last six years because the, I'm not like adjusting to like, you know, discomfort. Mm -hmm. And like not having the occasional one time a year where my back would go out mm. has been really nice. So why do you continue to work out if you haven't noticed any measurable differences in in business, like why do you still do it so consistently? Well, I don't work out for business. I work out because I believe that 70 to 90, you know, Mike once said something about the correlation of leg strength and longevity of Absolutely. life. And like, you know, I don't like take Mike's word for it. I'm like, is this some propaganda he's fucking with me? Cause I, these Bulgarian fucking things are just the worst fucking thing Bulgarian in my life. Bulgarian split squats? These Bulgarian squats, everyone's like, brutal. Bulgarian split squats make me, I did it two days ago and like I wanted to like legitimately like kill the world. <laughs> like they're just so hard. And now like, you know, I've, they were hard when I had to do body weight back in the day. Now this fucker's got me like carrying real weights with them too. So like, you know, so I looked into it and it's like really interesting. You start realizing like a lot of people, if they go to a cane or wheelchair, like it really fucks you up. And if you're at 90 and you can still be walking versus those alternatives, like that matters. And I'm also just very practical. Modern medicine, like when I look at everybody here, I'm like, look at how awesome we all have it. Everyone here has a real shot to be 100. Mm -hmm. That was not the case 30 years ago. Every, I would, everybody was gonna be 85, 92. And so like, I don't know, like very frankly, I think a lot about being 90 to 100. Mm -hmm. I think about who am I gonna be at that point, how much wisdom can I, like I always think about like Gary V today is trying to put out good into the world and has a big platform. Well me at 90 to 100, I can be on some Yoda shit and if I can hang for another 10 more years, I can leave more positive deposits and if I have to do fucking Bulgarian split squats <laughs> to be there, then fuck it, I'm gonna do it. Yeah. I really think that's like literally exactly how my brain thinks about it. Absolutely, one, another one of the, the biggest correlators to quality of life as you age is your ability to get up off the ground. Correct. Because you know, if you fall, that's right. a lot of that's right. elderly people are just kind that's of right. stuck there. That's right. So being able to get on the floor like and a then like, And then emotional stuff like, like, I don't know, if I live 90 to 100, does that mean I get to see my granddaughter get mm. married versus not? Like, yeah. I don't know, like, you know, it's really funny. I think everyone will associate with this. We all grew up in a way where when you're 17, you're just not over worried about being 34. You're like not worried about 34 year old headaches. And then you get to 34 or 25 and you're like, oh fuck, like here I am. Like right now it's easy for me not to overthink 90, but like in a blink I'm gonna be there. And like when you get there, then you do start worrying about it. And so like if I have to put in the logical work, and then like my friends are like, yeah, but you might, you know, like when they're like just gorging on food and wine and they're like, I'm not, and they're like, yeah, but you can get hit by a tree. I'm like, yes, you can get hit by a tree. I love when people use like mathematical things that are like virtually impossible, like like as a counterpoint. Like 
Anything you can control, if you can make it better, why wouldn't you consider it? And for me, working out is the hardest thing. Mm -hmm. To this day, almost a decade later, I do not want to do it. It does not come natural to me. It's, you know, I have such envy for people, I'm, I'm making assumption, just because you're in such great shape, I always feel like for those people, it's kind of like business for me. Like business for me comes natural. Mm -hmm. Everything's easy. I'll always be great at it, because I've always been and I always will be. But like, you know, I have a lot of envy, and I don't have a lot of envy in my heart, but I have envy for people that like literally like love it, mm -hmm. can't wait to go. Like for me, that's not my reality, but it's so damn important, I fight for it. Love it. What was the, so why, why hire somebody in person to travel with you and, and train you in person? I was self-aware enough to know that like I would hide. Like there was, there's this incredible story that Jordan and Mike talk about where I discovered that I could put my big toe against my kitchen, against my bathroom counter to lower the scale weight. And you would do that consciously? To so like, I also weigh myself every day and I take a picture and I send it to Mike and Jordan and it's like been kept me in check. It's huge for me. One day by accident, like I like slipped in the bathroom or something. Was and like it an it accident? Kicked, it was an accident. I like slipped in the bathroom for a second, like, oh, like, you know, like kind of scary shit. Like there was some water there. Mm -hmm. It kicked the scale a little bit. I didn't really realize it. You know, like showered, went on the scale and the skit was very close to like the bottom of my sink. And just somehow, I'm like on it, like somehow, it like grazed it and I could see that it kind of moved for a second. I'm like, like I'm like literally just n never dawned on me and I was like, wait a minute. And so like I pushed it a little more and I saw the scale went down. And so I started, like nothing happened. I sent the, I did it the normal day, but the next day, I remember this very vividly, like six years ago, I like had a big dinner. And I believe I had a big dinner because I actually just discovered this thing on a scale. And sure enough, the next morning, I was like up more than I'd like to be. And I kicked it a little. And then, so I, this went on for like two weeks. And like, and like it completely allowed me to go up like three actual pounds. Mm. Like actually, not kind of like, you yeah. know, scale weight. And I felt it. Because mm. at this point in my life, I've shredded. I went from like 188 to 157 to like 168, but like that 157 to 168 came with like five pounds of muscle. Mm, and I was, like, I was like, whoa, this is different. Like you start learning, right? I'm like, oh, I can be like at this weight, but look different. I'm like, look way, you know, like it's really cool when you learn like muscle can enter your body and yeah. like reform you and it, how much it hits the scale. And you just start learning when you don't know anything for all the people who are listening right now that don't know anything yet, you'll be on this journey. So I really felt it. I was like, this sucks. Like, this doesn't feel as good. Mm -hmm. And so I, I, it's just this really funny joke we always have because I was like, came downstairs real sad. They were both there, I think, if I recall it properly, or just one of them and they Zoomed the other one and I can't remember or FaceTimed. But I was like, guys, I've lost my way. <laughs> like, it was like real tail between the leg. Like, so I lost defeated. my way. I was like, they're like, what happened? I'm like, I figured this thing out and this and it's like, so it's like, you know, I guess th that was a very long winded way to tell you why I hired somebody full time. I knew that I was gonna try everything and anything to not do this. It's that bad. Like so, it's that hard for me. Yeah. It's like I'm sitting here right this second telling you how hard it is and if you told me nine years later after going through this journey that it would be this hard, I might have not believed you. I would have said ah, at some point it would have clicked in. It's a fight every day. It's just, it's also like, be, I always want, I actually want to make everyone who's listening to this make it more selfish. Like, forget about something as ideological as integrity, which I think is such a noble thing to fight for. It's just gonna not be good. Mm -hmm. Like, there's just like a much more kind of like basic, like, let me make this very basic for you. If you're lying to yourself about anything, it will be bad. Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, like, nothing good will happen. In a relationship, in like, you know, so many kids come up to me like, Gary Vee, you're gonna buy the Jets, I'm gonna buy the Broncos. Like, I, I, literally my brain every time, not to like, you know, like a lot of times, I'm just like, man, I hope that kid doesn't believe that. Or because, if he because, does, then he's serious about it. Correct, I mean, normally when I see it, my great hope is that they're like locked in yeah. and are obsessed and for 40 years I'm gonna do it. But like, in reality, 99.9% .9 of the time, it's very obvious to me immediately that 
it's someone who's tricking themselves. I'm gonna be a billionaire and I'm like, why and this and like, there's just like a lot, I see it a lot. I'm gonna be a rapper. I'm gonna be yeah. a professional athlete. Well, you know why a lot of people do that? I'm, I'm sure you know this, is we get a increase in dopamine when we say we're going to do something. So a lot of people will say something like that, they get that feeling and then the, the pursuit of it is, it, it doesn't matter anymore because they've already felt what it feels like and so they just keep saying these things, the I'm going to dot dot dot. The danger of the short term high in our society is a, is a real issue mm. um, and I know exactly why people do it. Uh, people also genuinely are grounded in insecurity and believe they can trick people into believing things. Um, this is a very big thing amongst people, in my opinion, when I'm watching people navigate. They're trying to paint a picture about themselves to others because they value others' opinions of them. And so they posture, they peacock. And, um, and I think that's a vulnerability, unfortunately, when it's not grounded in actual belief. Yeah, so let's talk about eating habits. I know you love blueberries. Yes. You mentioned that on the last episode. I do. Um, what else do you do to I've gotten, eat properly? You know, I've gotten very hot on something recently. I've definitely, my, my carb, my bad carb intake is down. And I really feel it, which I'm really excited about. I kind of decided in August, after going through a period of 100 days where I wasn't at my best, which is okay. Like, I think a big thing for a lot of people is they, beat themselves, they go great for six months, they have like one bad week, and they're like, ah, see, it's, like, it's okay, like you can get back on, right? So I went through like a summer where it was just a lot of travel, you know, after COVID, you know, I got to travel a little bit, and it just wasn't as tight as I wanted it to be. And like, then I had one week at my parents' house with the family where it really fell off the wagon, because my parents, like just go old school Eastern European, just a lot of garbage, <laughs> and like, and that's an excuse, I can navigate around it, but like, I was at the tail end of like a bad 100 day cycle. It was midsummer. we were in the best time family. I just like hit what I would call my rock bottom of my eating habits and like really felt shitty about it and then just kind of serendipitously watched like a keto propaganda documentary and I understood what I was watching but I took certain elements of it for myself and I kind of created my own like food triangle of like I'm gonna go dramatically more protein because I like it. I have a real, it comes unnatural to me, but I have a very good gift on the other side. I like everything. So like I like English peas and asparagus and cauliflower the same way I like sugar and a burger hmm. and like a shake, like equally. Hmm. So I have this real gift where I like, like it all. Hmm. So I was like, fuck it, I love pr clean protein, I love vegetables, like I can like shift this a little bit. And I've been on it since August and here we are, you know, like three, four months in and like, you know, I eat a lot of fruits and vegetables. I, I'm, my carb intake is down, that's huge, because I like a good muffin or <laughs> thing of that nature. I also try to eat clean more and more. So, you know, grass finished. Absolutely. Not just grass fed. I'm like, glad you mentioned that. Yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm pretty educated in some of that stuff. Like, you know, my girlfriend Mona is very educated in it. So like natural flavors I look out for. Like I've really become educated on what the government allows food companies in America to do. And so it's not only about calorie count, it's, the, it's really now at this point in my life like organ meats yeah. and things of that nature. I've gotten very, very educated and I'm just fighting to be good about it as often as possible. I'm very relieved that you mentioned that because that's something that a lot of people, at least in my experience, they don't understand. A lot of it's people the are next level. still focused on Correct. calories. It's the next level. Yeah. The next level that our entire society is gonna go into quality. is the quality of the product. Uh, that comes along with finances, so I think a lot about- For now. Correct. For now. And so like, I think entrepreneurs are gonna get in there and try to like build good businesses based on these trends, which will drive down costs. So it's gonna be fun to watch, but like, yeah, like I definitely am really deep on that and I think any style of eating, veganism, keto, things of that nature, anything that goes too extreme is missing the point. Yeah. So I'm trying to be very thoughtful of like being purple, like the whole red, yes. like you know, like I think a lot about that. So, you know, I think I'm I'm taking different little things from different kind of trends and 
knowledge bases, but eating clean, like you know, glass, like even glass over plastic for water, like 100%. like clean is definitely a part of my regimen. I'm not, you know, just for full transparency, I'm like also very capable of like just grabbing a Jolly Rancher and eating it, whereas like I know that is uncomfortably not clean, but I definitely think that I would be in the category of a clean eater now 80% of the time, which is insanely exciting for me because to even just have the knowledge of going to a restaurant and asking if the beef is grass finished, that's just like profound knowledge base that I didn't have walking around five years ago and so I'm really excited about what that will mean for my longevity. Yeah, speaking of the knowledge, where are you learning all this stuff? Mona. Okay. <laughs> like she's like <laughs> she's very deep into this, so she's propagandizing me 24/7. <laughs> but I'm genuinely, you know, curious about it. And I get into these Google, you know, YouTube documentary, and then I'm also very good at knowing if someone's pushing something. So yeah. I'm able to take a little step back, right? Yeah. Like, you know, I I I just am very common sense oriented, like you know, when I look at um, the personalities on the internet, I'm always trying to understand like, hey, what's their objective? Like, what's their financial goals? Mm-hmm. And I don't begrudge it, you know, but I'm also not gonna be like, look, if I if I just eat this, I'm gonna look like that yeah. when there's very <laughs> clear indications that there's chemically enhancement going along with maybe some good behaviors. Yeah, that's, that's why my brand is the captain's lifestyle because I was a CrossFit coach for a while. People would come to me asking, hey, I've been coming to the gym for a year now, why am I not seeing the difference? And I would say, well, how's your sleep? How is your stress levels? How is your diet? And their answers would always be the same. You know, I'm lucky if I sleep six hours, stress is high because of relationship, work, whatever. Diet is pretty good. And so they're thinking that they can spend one hour in the gym and offset the other 23 hours of uh, a bad lifestyle. Not to mention, and you know this, the other thing is a lot of people don't know what they're doing in the gym for an hour. Yeah. like. I'm like shocked, back to education. I got very fortunate with Mike and Jordan. These are real dudes. They did it the right way. Everybody get a personal trainer. You you know, like it's a big, yeah, it's a big difference. When you do it the right way versus the way you want to do it. Yes. Like my neck tried to do everything at first. (laughs) Like everything. Super tense, yeah. Yeah, I just didn't have any strength. So like everything was like the neck was doing all the fucking like my pushups for me, right? And so like when you learn how to like do it and just like, you know, you know this. Like, dudes are competitive and like do a lot of things for optics. So, like, do the it amount for the of ego, mo- yeah. and the momentum yeah. they use, and you're like not doing the right thing either. And then there's also just like body type. Like, you know, like I definitely for a lot of people listening, like I have a smaller frame and like smaller natural. Like, I've done so much of the right stuff. What I didn't do, COVID taught me a big one. I, for the first time, was able to really go in on a lot of work in the gym, protein. Mm. Like, I was so obsessed with weight that I could have a huge lift day and then fast. And so then what would happen was I wasn't getting the muscle benefit. In COVID, because I just had the time, I was like, you know what, fuck it, I have the time, let me like see it. That was by far the biggest muscle gain I've ever had. So, you know, I've definitely been in better behavior of muscle gain of like, okay, if I'm gonna hit it, I'm gonna, you know, I don't care about what this scale's gonna say today, even if I was bad yesterday, like I'm gonna hit the protein hard after this. Um, but some people, you're just never gonna look like certain, like I talk about this with Can't entrepreneurship all the time, like, like people like Gary, I wanna be like you. I'm like, I, you're not going to be. Be like you. Correct. I was like, I was selling stuff at five. I've only done this. I'm 40 years in, only doing this. I was a natural talent, only doing this. Like you're 29 and you were a good student and worked at a company and you're starting your first business. It's going to be a gap. Same for me, like I'm not gonna look like other people that maybe put in the same amount of work with me because they've been genetically predisposed to get different outcomes of the same work. That's okay, just maximize you. So what would your advice be to somebody who is looking at outside sources like people or uh, they wanna grow? Keeping up with the Joneses (laughs) is the number one way to be an unhappy person. (laughs) Here we go. Like keeping, like, Nobody else's physique, nobody else's bank account, nobody else's girl, nobody else's guy, nobody else's trips, nobody else's car, nobody else's follow count, blue check mark, like, it's, it's never gonna work out. It's never gonna work out. Go into your cocoon, 
a lot of times I make pretend I was part of the University of Miami football team with The Rock and like I have to do, like, the whole team's watching. Like I really have to do this stuff with my head and like I like that stuff and I want people to kind of almost live their life that way. Like do not live for anybody outside. Live for yourself, play within your own cocoon, create your own scenarios with yourself, for yourself and very good outcomes will happen. Let's talk on this mindset for a little bit because this is my number two or maybe number one performance hack is the story that you're telling yourself in your head. 100%. Because when most people go to the gym or do anything hard for that matter, they what if the bad stuff? What if I can't do it? What if I fail? What if I embarrass myself in front of all these people? I like to play the game, what if the good stuff? What if I could go for a minute longer? What if I could do three more reps? What would it mean about me if I was able to accomplish this thing? Comma, I love that, that's very beautiful. Comma, what about the concept of if you go to a public gym and you're only doing 15s and somebody snarks at you, what about actually feeling bad for that person? Yeah. Like to me, to me, the thought that somebody would try to hurt your feelings when you're in the gym just means they're deeply insecure, deeply. Yeah. You know, and so like, I think we as a society need to start feeling bad for people that try to make us feel bad, like actually feel bad for them. Well, it's your whole brand, empathy. I believe in it. I, be I genuinely have compassion for people that are trying to hurt me. Yeah. I like have never reacted to the negativity thrown at me in anything other than compassion. Mm -hmm. Never. Like, no, like, like, like. Because for me, I had to go through I had to understand, because I, I used to be that person. I got, I I got fortunate. Let's remember, I'm 47. I didn't start living my public life until I was like 34. Mm -hmm. So many more people, all of you, are growing up with it now. So I'm sure if I was 18 and started doing the Gary Vee thing, and that I was, was a, I was, media back then. yeah, I was probably a less strong mentally supernova. Yeah. Though I was still me, I would have probably done well-ish, but I would have succumbed. I would have definitely had insecurities around like, who the fuck knows, my zit, or, you yeah. know, there would've been shit, right? Yeah. I can definitely, I can relate to that. For me, I got fortunate when this all went down. I was like on the other side of the hill by then. So I'm, I'm curious about the organ meats. Do you actually consume the organ meats or do you take yes. a supplement? I actually consume them. Really, okay, yeah. which, which organs? I'll eat everything, like liver, like I'll eat anything. Like I'm very into like livers and brains and hearts. I'm being serious, like cow tongue. Like I'm <laughs> I'm very into weird shit. We should have brought some raw liver. Yeah, like liver is the easy one for me. Like liver is super easy. Like I like, I, I like, you know, this is less healthy, but like I'm like a foie gras, like sea urchin, you know, sweet so bread. Anything. I'm like very weird. What's like, the weirdest thing you've consumed? I think I've had baboon penis. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I just did that for the clip. Um, but I would, like, I'm like so weird. Like, I have, I don't skeeve. Like, there's that Dorian fruit or something that like kills oh, people. The, yeah, the like super, Dor Is that yeah. the super smelly one? Yeah, I like ate that when I was in Asia on like CNN. Like, they were like, we hear you. I'm like, I eat. Like, I'm like, I'm very strange with my tolerance. Like, I saw this lady like licking like a, like an escalator or something. You saw that one too? And I was like embarrassed where my brain went. Like I was like, I'd do that. Like, like, like it's just like, I'm very not germed. I'm like, whatever the most germaphobe, like, oh, Howie Mandel, I think, right? Yeah. It's like super, yeah. like I'm the reverse. Like, which allows me to eat all textures, all theories, nothing scares me. Like, I also grew up in an Eastern European household. Uh, Soviet, where like cow tongue is a big delicatessen, and it's like mm -hmm. the big ass tongue. Like it's wow. like it's not like the little yeah. part. The whole fucking things there. I would cut the shit out of that and eat it with horseradish. Like liver was like a constant. My mom would do liver all the time. Like, yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's really good, especially now. Like now, like I'm really, like, really excited that I think veganism, keto, this that. Like I feel like everyone's going to the middle. Like I hope I, so. I really feel it. I like really, that's what I do for a living. I watch trends. Well, that was my favorite part of our last episode. You making the difference between everybody's so blue and red and we need to come together to form purple. I want that's, it. I want it for society, definitely politically, but I think we're even seeing it in health and wellness. I think everyone's like, hey, this very alpha male movement, hey, this maybe more female energy movement, like everyone's kind of, balanced. it's coming in and that's, I'm really excited about it. That's my logo, it's the, the yin yang. Coming I love that, that's exactly right. Balance. Each of these 
spokes stands for a different um, most important pillar of of health and once you understand how to properly steer I love that about you brother I think that's a really good stance and I think that is going to be the answer to the quiz for the world whoever can get to the middle in a sustainable way forever will be the happiest and so uh, I think sometimes you get to the middle through extremes on both sides Mm -hmm. like I'm incredibly fiercely competitive I'm very alpha you know, I call Vayner Media the honey empire. Like empire is not a soft word. I'm trying to build an empire, but yeah. I want to do it with honey over vinegar. And so mm. I think sometimes you can get to the middle through extremes, which is okay. Yeah. Uh, actually probably realistic and self-aware. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited about health and wellness finding its middle ground. Um, and I hope people get more and more educated because it's like nice to live longer and happier. Mm. So we've talked about diet. Talked about exercise. Those are the two things most people are familiar with. What about sleep? Let's talk about your sleep habits. Oh, man, I sleep, my normal is 11 or 12 to seven at this point. For the last, I would argue for the last six years, I've been in the 12 to seven game. Now, does that, I mean, I'm going to Qatar tonight. Like, who the hell knows what my sleeping pattern in the next 48 hours is gonna be? Do you have anybody who helps optimize, like, jet lag? Do you have, like, a high-performance coach or anything? No. You know, on that front, I haven't gotten to that place. You know, what I can tell you is this. I am... If someone asked me, like, what's driving you for all the stuff you put out in the world? I feel an enormous amount of guilt for how little anxiety I have. Hmm. I don't know how else to say it. I, in my true purple, it is a mixture of guilt and gratitude. But it's like tough to talk about publicly when you know how many of the eight billion people on earth don't have that. I'm so simple in real life that I struggle to be anxious. And what I mean by that is nothing bothers me except the occasional pop up a fear that someone I love is gonna get sick or die soon, and then when that happens. Everything else is just way too manageable, and I feel like the reason I'm talking about this is I have to believe the fact that I sleep like a fucking baby, and I mean like really, like the second I lay down, it's good night, Charlie. Like I do not sit there and think about like anything. Mm anything. Yeah. It's you know like Why do you think that is? Cuz I don't have anxiety. I know, but why? Because I think I keep life incredibly uncomfortably simple. How so? I don't care about anything except yeah. like 20 people's health. Yeah. <laughs> like 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 genuinely <laughs> actually for real nothing. I mean, I understand. I'm just trying to, to, to yeah, convey no, it for I the mean, listeners cuz Like I'll give you really a great I'll give you I'll simple. give you a great example. I think it would, even people that kind of know me well, knock them to their soul when we hang out in heaven and I show them how much I cared about my professional career. Nothing. Yeah. I have like almost. That was my favorite part of your book. Like one of the first sentences in there, like once you truly understand how unimportant business is. Then you can get good. 100% brother, thank you for calling that out. I have almost none of my self-esteem wrapped up in my professional accomplishments. If I'm on the other side of consuming me, unless I'm like five years in and really listened to all the words, I don't see how one could get to that conclusion. But it's true. It's all just a game. It's all simple, it's all slow for me, it's all easy. I love people. People can't hurt me, I'm not trickable. I believe in my intuition, my emotional intelligence is off the charts. When people try to hurt me, I'm not mad at them. I have compassion for them. It's just all fucking simple and quiet. It really is that simple. It really is that simple. Now, what even compounds that is, I have a heavy dose of humility in that because I realize that that is the work of my DNA and my parenting and my environment, all of which have nothing to do with me. So on top of everything I just said, when you also then say these things and you come from a place of humility. Like, One of the reasons I passionately talk about what I talk about when it comes to me is I think I'm giving 
roses to my parents. When I talk about me in this setting, I don't feel anything good about it. I feel good that my parents get to hear it and they should feel good about it. Hmm. They're the creators of. When I talk in any context about myself, that's me giving roses to Sasha and Tamara Vaynerchuk. Not hmm. to me. They built this. My mom built this. My dad built this. Hmm. For real. Now there was circumstance like, but like they decided to come to America. So they even get the credit for that. I mean like they get a lot of this. And so like for me, I do have pride in the way I've built my companies. Like when I look at VaynerMedia, I'm like, I did this. Mm -hmm. Of course, they, my team, but like, fuck, I did this. But when I talk about me, that's what makes me laugh about people like kind of like ego or like, like I'm like, which is insecurity, but like, yeah. like, I don't know, like Michael Jordan, let's talk about it. Is that for Michael Jordan or is that for his parents? Like. Like, like, you know, like, like, I really think about this shit. Like, I think the person that is can talk about, like, their kids can talk about their businesses, their output into society. But, you know, like, it gets hard to, like, when I think about my lack of anxiety, I'm like, man, that was a son of a bitch fucking masterclass of how to build a human being. My mom gave me affirmation of confidence on the best things held me accountable to things that didn't matter, school, mm, yep. but didn't have my validation wrapped up in it. You know how challenging it is to punish your child for bad grades, make them realize you just can't fucking navigate life and do whatever, there's ramifications for certain things when you're supposed to be doing them, but don't have an ounce of your self-esteem wrapped up in your DNFs, that's fucking hard. Sneak something in before we get out of here. All right, free speech. Free speech. Is it being suppressed? I don't think so. No? No. All right. We'll leave it. <laughs> Gary Thank, you, v, Thank you, sir. Pleasure, Appreciate man. it.